Learning objectives include structure and function of axial filament. Axial filament is another version of flagellum. Motility of bacteria by axial filament, uh, we would also study that. And fimbriae and their role, and also pili and their role. This is um, axial filament. Basically, it consists of a bunch of a number of endoflagella. These are small filaments that are grouped together and they are named as axial filaments. The difference between the flagellum and this axial filament is that axial filament is enclosed in an outer sheath. So there are basically two cell membranes. This is the inner cell membrane and this is the outer cell membrane here. And this Axial filaments are actually embedded in the space between the two membranes, inner membrane and the outer membrane. This is the only difference. Structurally, they're also made up of proteins much like flagellum, and they're present only in uh, uh, spirochetes. This is another exploded view of uh, the, the uh, axial filament. As, as I mentioned earlier, that there is an outer membrane here, and there is inner membrane here. This is the DNA uh, of the nuclei, nucleoid. And this is the cell, which is the protoplast here. And between the two layers, inner membrane and the outer membrane, uh, these are small flagelli, which basically make the axial filament. And when, they, when this rotates, the whole thing rotates, it basically is a movement like a screw cork or cork screw movement. It's not like the flagellum movement as you saw earlier. This is different. Also, this is another view of the basal body. So each axial filament has a basal body. And then the, the filament, it basically rotates around the cell all the way on, uh, along the body of the, the, the bacterium. This is another version of the same uh, slide that I showed earlier. Here, this is the outer membrane, and this is the, this is the cell wall here. This, is, this blue line here is the inner membrane. So the flagelli, or the uh, uh, endoflagelli, or what we call here, they are all grouped together here. And all of them are, when they combined into one group, they are called an axial filament. So this is just one of those endoflagella, uh, endoflagellum, as you can see, there's a basal body embedded in the inner membrane, and then the filament, uh, it, it protrudes out of the, this glycopeptidoglycan layer and membrane, inner cell membrane, but then it is covered by the outer membrane. So it remains within the periplasmic space, basically. So movement, this kind of movement, which is within a contained space, it causes the bacterium to rotate, basically. So this movement, is slightly different than the movement of the flagellum. This is another version where it shows that the axial filament basically is kind of twisted around the cell, around the cell. And there's one on this side, and there's another on this side, okay? So this is a kind of sliding movement. When this filament moves, or uh, rotates, uh, it causes the bacteria to move Kind of in a sliding motion. This is the motility here, here. As you can see, this is a kind of corkscrew uh, type of movement where the bacteria slides, rotates on its axis, basically. This is a, a better version. Just kind of making a, um, a, a corkscrew movement. Now, Another component of the bacterium uh, is the fimbriae. These are basically structures that are present outside the cell wall. And these hair-like projections, these are all fimbriae. And they, they're composed of a protein, and the name of the protein is pilin. In flagellum, it was flagellin. Here it is pilin, so again a protein. So these fimbriae could be located on one pole of the bacterium, or maybe at the two poles of the bacteria, or they could be uh, present all around it. 
covering the entire cell. The purpose of these fimbriae is to attach to the surface. The, the bacterium uses these fimbriae or these appendages to attach themselves to various surfaces like epithelial cells or surfaces in like water stream. Again, fimbria, the word fimbria is a singular and fimbriae is a plural. So please keep that in mind too. Here is a, the fimbriae uh, that are being used for the bacterium for attachment onto a hard surface. And this basically enables the bacteria to adhere to the surface and then they proliferate as colonies. So they establish themselves as colonies and then they uh, live as colonies. So these fimbriae basically help them attach to the surfaces. Similarly, bacteria uses these fimbriae to attach themselves to the epithelial cells. When they infect the body, they need to attach first to the cells so that they can invade or they can enter into the cells. So these fimbriae, uh, which are hair-like structures or hair-like uh, components of, the, of the, uh, the bacterium, they help them attach to various surfaces. Like these are the two examples, Neisseria gonorrhea, causes gonorrhea in humans. And there's another bacteria, E. coli O157, which also causes diarrhea. These bacteria attach to the uh, cells of the intestine. E. coli attached to the cell of the intestines. Neisseria gonorrhea, uh, this is a, a bacterium that causes infection in the reproductive system. Another structure is called pili or pili. Singular is pilus, plural is pili. They could be one, could be two, or could be up to 10 different uh, pili. They are basically bristle-like, longer than fimbriae. These are fimbriae here. And could be present singly or in pairs or even up to 10 number. They also uh, help uh, bacteria adhere to another bacterium. I mean, the, the, the fimbriae, they were used for, by the bacterium to attach to the surfaces. But these pili, they are used by the bacterium to attach to another bacterium. And it is not necessary that the bacterium uh, should be the, from the same species in order to interact. So an E. coli bacterium can interact through this pilus to another uh, species like Salmonella. And it is used for transferring DNA from one bacterium to the other. This is a property that many bacteria uh, exploit or use for making themselves resistant, resistant to antibiotics, for example. Here is a picture taken uh, during that transfer. As you can see, this is a donor bacterium. So donor bacterium would extend its pilus to another bacterium, which is a recipient bacterium here, and then inject its DNA or transfer its DNA from here to this one. And it does not inject all of its DNA. It just gives a, what we call a plasmid, extra chromosomal DNA that basically has antibiotic resistant gene on it. So this bacterium, if, had a, if, if it has acquired resistance against some antibiotic, so it can transfer its plasmid to this bacterium and then this bacterium becomes resistant too. As I mentioned, of course, it is used for DNA transfer. And with that perspective, it is also called as sex pili. But it is also used other than that, other than transferring DNA, it is also used for twitching motility. It's, it's another ki kind of movement some bacteria use uh, that. It's called a gliding motility. So the bacteria glides on the surface by using its pili. So in summary, axial filament basically is used by some bacteria like spirochetes. They, uh, the motility which we see by the use of axial filament, um, it's not a very fast movement. It is a kind of a twisting uh, of the bacterium. It's a twisting kind of motility. Uh, fimbriae are used for attachment to the surfaces and pili they serve two purposes. They can serve as attachment as well, attachment to another bacteria or bacterium. And they could also use uh, for 
ਮਟਿਲਰੀ 